Uh, so, to either is this uh, cyclic behavior on the electricity market in terms of investment prices, etc., tolerable to the society? This he believes is historical. And if not, that means probably the conclusion that a competition or liberalized market in electricity may be unfe unfeasible. The second point is, that is my, my question to you, maybe do you think that liberalized electricity markets are feasible? And this, of course, has an impact on financing and energy investment. Um, second, you have said short run price elasticity is extremely low. The question is, who is the customer? The, the demand. Who represents the demand? In my group, it is not the, the household, but it is the, the so-called aggregate or the balancing group manager or the, the marketing company. And if you go, for example, for the case of Belgium, you can see that the demand of electricity is quite high. Uh, normally, last year, this winter, electricity uh, shortage should have been occurred in, um, in Belgium, but uh, the grid operators announced that it is a critical situation. The result was that the Belgian customer reduced electricity demands very significantly, so there was no uh, no way. So these are my questions to Aina. Then I have questions to Christopher. Uh, okay, so, uh, let us uh, first ask. Yeah. Hey, I'm uh, I, I, I <laughs> Last, it will be up to last. Yeah, Norway and Sweden. Next, last. So, um, Mike, uh, uh, Christoph has um, uh, 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 put the point on network issues. And there we have in Europe, at least and in some other countries, the issue of unbundling. Unbundling means separate the generation of electricity from the grid from the grid business. And there are different forms of unbundling. One form of unbundling is so-called ownership unbundling. That means there are completely different owners who run the power stations and who run the grids. But on the other hand, there is also for the for distribution grids, there is only uh, uh, so-called uh, informational unbundling and man management unbundling. So different type of unbundling. And under this situation, uh, the, the development of renewables is, uh, to my view, and this intermittent sea problem is uh, quite relevant. Who is, should be in charge to solve the problem? Should be the grid operator, which has in principle nothing to do on the electricity market, he should only transport the electricity, or should it be the so-called balancing group manager, that one which, uh, which, uh, which has to provide electricity to the customers? We are in Germany discussing actually a project which we, uh, we have a red, lamp, red light. The red light means there is a shop, uh, the capacity shortage in the grid, and green light there is no capacity shortage in the grid. And then we say if there is red light, there is uh, the grid operator who is responsible, and if it's green light, it is the balancing room manager. But between red and green, uh, and, uh, red light and green light, there is a yellow light. And how long is this yellow light fast? How you should organize this? I think this is, I think, Problem which has to be addressed. And uh, last to Sylvia, of course, I was very impressed by the lady who presented. Um, but of course, at, at the end, you gave some idea, the prospection in the perspectives in the future. And my question is not uh, referred to this future. Will the private finance work if auction uh, markets, uh, if markets, renewable markets, will be based on auctions instead of uh, fixed income premiums? What uh, will be the share of equity debt if you go to the stage? Uh, the, the background of this question in Germany, we have seen that uh, renewable energy investment can be financed with 80% uh, debt, which is, I think, very much. Maybe you can comment on that. Uh, I think maybe we will have a different type of financial structure. And uh, last question on this project, maybe we are already very low interest rate. What happens with the, with the industry? Uh, if the interest rate may change. So that I think this uh, uh, last should answer, and uh, during the answer, maybe you can uh, think about additional questions to the three speakers. Thank you. I will try to answer that uh, quickly. Has um, liberalization failed? Well, I, I, I think I should say that um, the rules of the game have been changed. Actually, as I said at the beginning, um, the drivers behind uh, the increasing of reform was the belief that market-based investments would uh, reduce overcapacity, would increase the productivity of the industry, and to believe that the process would be more efficient than the old type of regulation. However, uh, since then, it seems that uh, political preferences have changed. Now it is much more important what kind of production system we have. And it's a 
we know the electricity is there. And there is no discussion that I have heard about about productivity. The productivity of the power industry is much more about its transformation to the sustainable system. So um, I don't think that liberalization failed. I think it worked pretty well, in fact. But preferences have changed, and I know it's a completely new situation. I think it's a risk to ask, but I'm glad there is any room for uh, liberalized markets in the future when the investments are so much controlled and driven by political preferences and support systems. Why should we have markets uh, that sort of pretend to be competitive? I think that's a question. About uh, the low price elasticity, yes, so it's the aggregate is that actually act on the market, but behind the aggregate is our final consumers, and if these final consumers don't really observe what the price is and don't have a chance to react on it, then uh, price, short term price variations do not reflect the actual what to pay for it. Uh, let me make a comment. I think uh, we saw some very interesting numbers, and I'm really showing how much investment in renewable energy there is. And, but I think that's also important to remember the kind of dynamic that is uh, going on here in the electricity market. Because with the wind and solar, with the wind in the remote area, uh, we talk about what is the cost per produced uh, kilowatt hour. But actually it's very important to also discuss what is the revenue per kilowatt hour. Because the more hydro, uh, the more wind power you have in the system, um, it's more likely that you could be producing electricity when prices are very low, or, or the, 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 the other way around. That there will be so much wind energy on the market that prices will be very low, so the uh, profitability of these uh, plants will be decreasing, there will be pressure on the subsidy systems, um, the politicians uh, have to put more subsidies, they have to please your investors to make it sure that continuous investments are, are sufficient for growth. And I think this is a dynamic that should be discussed. Okay. Yeah. I, I will try to answer to your red or green light uh, question. Uh, just thank you for reminding that uh, the sector is under the Europe and uh, that. Uh, uh, transport, uh, transport and distribution sector is uh, regulated because it is a natural monopoly. And uh, for that reason, uh, we have to have a regulator which is setting a tariff. The tariff in many countries, European countries, is split into two parts the fixed part and the variable part. Uh, the fixed part is about, uh, to say, in average 20% of the total tariff, and, and we have, have 80% to get from. The variable part, which is the volume of energy which is transported or distributed. If, due to the distributed generation, there is less volume transported, the revenue of the, of the transporter will decrease, while the investment are the same. Investment in, in France is uh, for a country of 60 million people, is uh, 4 billion euro per year. We could pay two EP, uh, in one year, in one year, in two years, we could pay two EPRs, for instance. And nobody talks about this level of investment, which is quite significant. So we have to know in which direction we, have to go, we are going to invest in, in, in the distributed generation or in centralized generation. So there is, there, is, there is a real question mark for us to know in the long run what, what, what is the target, and so we are looking for stability. Uh, so, and we have no, no opposition. Because to, to have uh, as much this, this subsidy generation as possible, uh, whatever the cost will be for, for the customer. The simple uh, question we have is the business model. Uh, if there is to, uh, to, to, uh, to be uh, excessive in my, in my demonstration, if we have zero energy delivered to, uh, to a self consumer or prosumer, still, uh, it, so we will have no revenue except the 20%. For, from that, but we, we will have to bring in the, very often the insurance that if there is no wind, it will be, it will be connected to the, to the network in case, just in case there is a, an insurance role of the network, which is existing actually, which is not paid if there is no nuclear no tower. And there is also another role, which is the frequency control. Most of this technology needs to have 
maybe not much change from 20. And so there are some very big capital and financing costs. And at some point, if interest rates go up, that would affect the cost of marginal oil and gas projects. And it is the price of gas, not the price of oil that does the necking. And then if the financing costs feed through, at some point that could affect oil supply and demand, and certainly gas supply. to the comp uh, competitive um, position of renewable and certainly to, uh, I was more focusing on the renewable energy LCOE and the relative uh, component of financing cost. Do we have any other questions over there? Ah, first here and then here. Hello. I have a question on market design. Um, electricity markets are extremely regulated. I mean, distribution is totally regulated. Uh, renewables with subsidies to survive and uh, coal and gas are asking for help in order to compete in a, in a new environment with uh, prices which are declining or, or at least uh, sometimes are very, very close to zero. So my question has to do with the, with the market design. The market design, the, the regulation of the electricity market is being more and more complicated and given that this is so regulated and the scope for private initiatives reduced, more or less. I mean, what is the role, the real role, or the future of private companies in, in a market that is going to be more regulated as renewables increase? Well, that's related to my comment that um, I think it's a very good question to see that um, when investments, which are really the key in the market, uh, are so much influenced by regulations and subsidies so that uh, commercial power companies only have to look at the politicians and find out what the regulation would be. I think that much of the potential benefit of the competitive market doesn't exist anymore. So, uh, and also there's all, all sorts of other regulations. So I, I think one should, should really rethink about what is the new, an appropriate market design uh, in an in the power industry, which is so much driven by political goals about uh, the composition of the public and so on. And it's not obvious that the ideas from the early 90s uh, should survive that. Yes, to, 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 to quantify what is uh, regulated, what, what can be and what is open to the market, so just in the number link, just to remind that the generation is in the competition market. The transport and distribution is here, it depends on the country. Uh, the regulation, uh, uh, transmission and distribution are regulated, but uh, is it well regulated? This is the question. And there is some discussion that sometimes the regulator is changing its, its regulation. And also, the, the, commercial, the commercial part is also is, is, uh, very often uh, in the competition market. So, this is uh, just to quantify a little bit that. There is a question, and I would ask, is there another question? Uh, another question, and then I think we should stop uh, the discussion. So my question is on renewable energy investment. Actually, you mentioned for the developing countries, especially those in South Africa, that they are uh, banking sector, that because of, they don't like to, to finance long-term projects, and I credit that is one of the, that's some of the major reasons for low renewable energy investment. But I think there's a very important issue because I work uh, in the credit sector of one of the commercial banks. And I think one of the uh, issues, some of these countries, they don't really have like a very strong renewable energy policies. So to some extent, some banks, as a result of that, some banks, they are skeptical about uncertainty in climate change policy. So as a result of that, they deny uh, they deny uh, private investors in renewable. So I think that is a very important comment. Because of uh, uncertainty in climate change policies and the fact that the governments of some of these countries don't pursue very strong renewable energy policies, some of those banks decline investments in uh, renewable. Thank you. I think we don't need to comment or do you want to comment? Uh, because uh, we have not only this problem which you mentioned about uh, regulatory uncertainty in, in developing countries, but also a lot of these kind of problems in developed countries, and uh, 
somehow we have a discussion uh, touched this point. Maybe there is a, a last um, uh, question here. Yes. I have a question to Lars Beckmann, and it's about the classification of the capacity market because you said it's somehow more regulation than maybe compared to the energy of the market, it's a bit more regulation. But uh, if a, a situation arises after 10, 15 years where capacity itself is only used as backup capacity, and capacity itself becomes a new product. And if uh, the energy on the market cannot incentivize this backup capacity, then my question is, if we don't have a new market like a capacity market, do we, would we not um, um, see the state acting very technically, maybe, and more regulative than it would be in a capacity market? And so, can we see that the capacity market as a, a natural uh, Development of the liberal, liberalization. Yes, I think it's necessary. I mean, this uh, so-called missing money problem is a big problem, and, and uh, somehow you have to find a solution. And um, what I call the first best solution is not doesn't seem to be feasible. So we will have to end up with some kind of capacity like so I fully agree with that. But when we are going to do, in, introduce this mechanism, I think it's very important to think about the consequences. In terms of um, how the whole market works and also to what extent it manages to minimize the cost of security supply. So uh, these aspects are very important, but some kind of capacity market is needed as far as I can Yeah, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have exhausted our, our time and um, we had three very interesting contributions, but of course we are in the midst of the transformation both in the electricity market with all renewables, means capacity markets, etc., as well as in the market for renewables. We have the problem how to organize uh, intermittent energy and the grid. So there are a lot of questions and not all of these questions have been touched and answered here, and particularly the question how to finance all this. Uh, but uh, that is an incentive for all of us to continue thinking these kind of issues and uh, hopefully we will have uh, in next conferences similar discussions and maybe with, with more uh, precise results. Thank you uh, for you, thank you for the speaker, uh, thank you to the speakers which gave such a nice effort to make this, uh, this uh, session as a success. Thank you very much and uh, join me in applauding all.